Howdy folks, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'd know I don't tend to use a whole lot of filters. They can only degrade your image, but for certain applications, they can be fantastic. So I got in a whole bunch of 10 stop neutral density filters to compare them and see, is there really justification for the huge variation in price? Now, all the ones we're focusing on are 77 mil screw-ons. Almost all of them come in different sizes, of course, for different lenses. But I went for screw-ons rather than sliding ones because it's a lot more accessible for people and you don't need to buy the whole filter kit and there's a whole lot on the market. So first of all, 10 stop, why would you use it? Now this is not just for knocking down your exposure a little bit so you have more control over your aperture, for example. That's where a three stop will come in handy. 10 stop takes out more than 999 out of a thousand of the light. It's really knocking down your exposure. 10 stops means one stop is half the light. Two stops is a quarter. If we follow that all the way through, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, a sixty-fourth, a one twenty-eighth, a two fifty-six, a five twelfth, a one thousand and twenty-fourth of the amount of light actually passes through. So what is that good for? Essentially, it's to allow you to get long exposures in daytime. So for example, if you were shooting wide open at f 2.8, a 10 stop will only give your camera the light equivalent of, quickly count it on your hands, pause me and figure it out. So why is that helpful? It means that you can get an extremely long shutter speed even in the glaring sun. Or if, for example, you want to shoot at a shallow depth of field so that you've got the building sharp and the water out of focus. So anyway, I've gotten in a bunch of different filters ranging from $10 through to $380, all doing essentially the same thing, but vastly varying in quality and price. So how I'm going to test these, I'm heading down to Dumbo in New York to set up a simple shot looking over the, the piers, the old pier forks in the water shooting back at the financial district. Now, to make sure that I get this all right, I'm going to be shooting custom white balances all the time, regularly as the light changes, and updating the camera, and then I'm actually going to be presenting you the JPEG straight out of camera. This isn't about getting an amazing final image, this is just about seeing which filters have a color cast, or a bad vignette, or a big loss in sharpness and contrast. And of course, using so many different filters, I am taking along some filter wrenches to be able to get them off if some get stuck. As I go through the specs a little bit later, one of the reasons that brass is preferred over aluminium or other products, they're less likely to get jammed. Brass being soft, there's, it's easier for you to work it on and off if it does get misaligned. So with all of that, let's head on over. So the area I was shooting is at Dumbo. Dumbo, if you didn't know, is an acronym for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. And if you just walk from the ferry pier, about two minutes, you get to this location, really easy to set up and get access to. Now, it was great chatting with a few other photographers there. I just chose an easy vantage point rather than the most creative because I had a bag full of filters that I needed to whip on and off in a one hour period to try and get it as close to the same lighting situation as I went through all of the different shots. Now, I went with a Hasselblad X1D in this case for three main reasons. First off, in this situation, the image quality is just unbeatable. Second, it's got an unlimited timer. It does something like an hour rather than the 30 seconds of a lot of other cameras. If it needs 109 seconds, that's what it'll take. So that's really handy. And thirdly, it has a really cool color picker. So when I'm using my white balance card, I can take a sample shot of that in the light that's hitting the same buildings in the background and then in camera actually select the grey cut and it takes a custom white balance off that. So really accurate and handy to then know all of the JPEGs in my series are at the right white balance to accurately compare filter to filter. Really beautiful day shooting on to Dumbo. Now let's head back into studio and take a look at the different images and see which is which and can you tell the difference between a $10 filter and a $380 filter in terms of results. Okay, so that was a really fun way to start 2019. Now, as I said, I went through and specifically kept taking white balance checks to make sure that I was keeping it close because there were some surprising results. The most surprising thing was how goddamn filthy my sensor is. <laughs> so spare me the criticisms, I've realized it and I'm booked in for a sensor clean already. 
So I'm going to run through and talk you through in the order that I actually tested them so that you can see them as they came out of camera. As I said, this is all with the custom white balance JPEG out of camera, so you're seeing the actual results based on the filters, okay? Now, so first of all, I took the white balance setting, got a shot with no filter on, and here's our result. Then first up, the Polar Pro Quartz line. Now, these guys are brass, they're multi-coated, they, they say it's a precision coating, and that it's fused quartz glass, and the glass is just one millimeter thick. So the, this is just about the thinnest of the bunch. Now for me, this has minimal color shift, great sharpness and contrast. Um, it is, however, the second most expensive at $240. So you would want it to be performing great. Now I'm actually not going to tell you the price of every one as we go through for two reasons. One, it can influence how you see the shots, and two, a lot of them go on sale and some of these are already on like 50% off and that's going to change over time. So I'll pop links below and you can click through to check the ones that you actually like the results, yeah? If they're extreme high or low price, then I'll mention it. Next up, I tested the B&W MRC110M. Now this is, you'll find this on a lot of them. They quote that they're saying that they're using shot brand glass, which is a good brand of glass. Some of them mention the type of glass, some don't, because of course they make lots of different kinds. So this is just using some kind of shot glass. It's got a simple multi-reflective coating on it. For me, the vignette and the color of this one are okay, but not fantastic. There is an obvious vignette coming through here. Now that is the lower price of the B&W range. Um, so then I took another sample to get the white balance. The light changes in color throughout the afternoon. I was shooting this at about 3 p.m., but the sun sets here at 4.30. So every five minutes, the color temperature is actually changing. If you want to learn more about how to use light, read light, see light, including color, direction, shadow, all of that, check out my Take Control of the Light course over at the website. Next up is the Format High Tech Firecrest. This is the lower of the two models that I tested out. This says that it's using shot super white glass, which is about the top you can get. It says it's hydrophobic, scratch resistant, has 15 layer multi-reflective coating. On close inspection though, I am seeing an obvious loss of sharpness on this guy, so that's a little bit disappointing. Next up, the F-Dop Lab. Now, this one says it has a 16 layer multi-coating. It's shot crown glass. Don't know what that type of glass is. Aluminium frame that it's hydrophobic. Now, this has an obvious cool color cast and an obvious loss of sharpness, but this guy came in at $10 by far the cheapest of the bunch. And I think it and two or three others are actually the same filter, but rebranded and varying in price quite a bit as well. So that was one where I actually needed to use the filter remover because it went on off straight, not perfectly straight. And that's something that you get with higher quality ones, just overall the build is more precise. But for 10 bucks, if you just wanna play around, it's not a terrible option. Next up, the Breakthrough Photography X2. This is the lower of their range, the X2. It's say that it's using HK9L glass. I don't know exactly what that is. And an aluminum frame with knurled sides, but it's not the same build or glass as their higher X4. They say that it's weather sealed, so it's safe for outdoor use, that it'll fully seal the front of your lens, uh, that it's only three and a half mil thick. And they say that this doesn't have a color shift at all and it's the best for sharpness. Their whole range, they claim that. Now for me, this had a definite green shift and I did recheck it, I verified it. And then jumping up to their flagship, the X4, using the same settings immediately after this is the result we're getting. So an obviously different result. Now this is using the shot B270 glass, which is the same as super white glass. This is brass, it's got a great grip on the side, also weather sealed, eight layers of anti-reflective coating. Now this is obviously a lot better color than the X2 had, but both of them had good sharpness. Now the X4 actually was a really good performer in my mind. So I actually used that as kind of a benchmark later in the test when I needed to compare and make sure I had my settings right because the color was coming really well off that. Next up was the Hoya Solus IRND. Now this is said to cut the infrared. Now a couple of them do that and some of them do that and don't even mention it because 
on those longer exposures, the buildup of infrared can cause a color shift. So they're often dealing with that in their own way, but this one specifically mentions that it's got special things in there to try and cut the infrared. Um, this says that it's non-coded, surprisingly. All the others are touting how great the coatings are. Now, the color on this is good, not excellent, but good. Some vignetting and a slight loss of sharpness, but again, for where this is in the price range of all of them, that's actually a pretty good result. Next up is the Format Hi-Tech Firecrest Ultra. Now, this is as expensive as the top-end BMW and other ones that we're looking at here. This has got 15-layer coating. It says it's super slim, but it's 55 mil, and that's about as thick as any that we tested in this. This is using the Shot Super White Glass, which is the same as we saw on the X4. This, however, has an obvious yellow cast, so it's clearly not just the Shot Glass that's giving us the performance, it's the overall coatings. Next up was the ICE branded one. Now this was significantly more expensive than the F-Stop Labs, but I think it's actually exactly the same. Um, and I guess ICE means blue, because it's got an obvious color shift and loss of sharpness. Next up was the Helio Pen 10-Stop. Now this is using shot glass, got grippy sides. For some reason it was giving us a longer exposure. This was around 23 seconds, whereas the shots before and after were only 17. So it may actually be stopping 10 and a half stops or something, I don't know, 10 and a bit stops anyway. Um, but for me, it's noticeably desaturated. So I actually took a, a safety shot with the X4 and you can see it went back to normal. So I think for some reason, it does actually desaturate a little bit. Next up, now here's for something completely different, the Tiffin XLE series accent. Now. Like you probably are, I was very surprised at that result. So I actually re-white balanced to make sure I hadn't made a mistake and got the same result. Then I took a safety with the same settings using the X4 again, and this was the result. Then took another one with the Tiffin, and this was the result. So it's clearly that that's what the filter is giving us. Now, there's no mention on the sales websites that I've seen, but on Tiffin's own website, they do mention that this is specifically to cut in for red, and that it can cause a color shift. So there you go. And they say it's more suited to black and white shooting. So here, black and white conversion, yes, it comes up beautifully, but then so do all of the other ones. So unless you're shooting with an infrared modified camera, I mean, I don't know that I can recommend that to anyone. Next up is the BW SC110. This is the cheapest of their range. It's still brass, it's still shot glass, it's still got coatings, but they're simpler than the middle and high-end ones. But it does have obvious vignetting and color uh, deterioration compared to the higher-end ones. Like this, which is the top-end one, about triple the price of the low-end one. It's got moldy coating, it's still brass, all of that stuff. It adds extra coatings for uh, water repelling. Um, it mentions that it's a bit wider than others, so you may not be able to get your hood on there. Things like the breakthrough are specifically made very narrow, so your hood will still fit on. Um, but this XS Pro is fantastic. The color and sharpness are as good as any that we tested here. Next up is the <laughs> Singray Thin More Slow. Now this is 4.6 millimeter thick, not thin. It's aluminum, not brass. It's non-coated. They don't mention the glass type. And this is far and away the most expensive, like 50% more than the next most expensive one. I do think it's as good as the XS Pro from BW and the Breakthrough, close anyway, probably 90% as good as those. But at double the price, it's just a bad proposition. And it's in this naff little wallet, it's still got their phone number and stuff on it. I feel like this is XS stock that was meant to be sold in the 80s and just got left in the warehouse because that price is kind of ridiculous. Next up is the newer Slim 77, 3.6 mil thick. They just say it's optical glass, good to know it's transparent. It gives a very blue color cast, it's not sharp, and I think it's pretty much the same as the other super cheap ones we've looked at here. And that's pretty much rounding out our groups. Okay, so final wrap up. Now, sorry to say, but as in most areas of life, to an extent, you get what you pay for. There's some obvious overpriced ones worth skipping that you're not getting anything for that extra money. But a couple of things came out. So a lot of the brands have two or three levels. 
And in every case, their top level was superior in terms of build quality, but most importantly, image quality. Now, the ones that are all around the same price point, the BWXS Pro, the X4 from Breakthrough, the more expensive Polar Pro, they are all performing the best. They are fantastic. Um, that said, when you get to their lower end ones, at least of say the BW, it's significantly less impressive optically and a lot closer to the 10 and $20 no-name ones, but you are still getting brass and the overall better coatings. I just, I don't think you can justify the price increase on their lower end ones. Overall, the Hoya Solus is giving great bang for buck in terms of where it is in the market and the, the total price you're paying for it. Out of all of them though, I would have to go with either the BW XS Pro, that's a great option, but I think at the same price, even better image quality, thinner and just it feels like a beautiful build quality would be the X4 from Breakthrough Photography. But links below, you can check out each of the different filters that I've shown here um, if there was one that particularly appealed to you. Uh, likewise with the filter remover, they're really handy, especially if you're using a bunch of them. So please do let me know if you have any questions, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, because I have a bunch of new content coming through 2019 that I can't wait to share with you guys. So thank you, I'll see you soon.